Ooh, okay. You've made it to the final mini lecture of the day. I'm like, I'm exhausted because I've just done these all in a row, but you made it to this one. So module three is the last module in unit one, and it's pretty short, pretty quick. Um, and it's a lot of stuff that you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense anyways. So module three is going to be focused in on different jobs that exist within psychology and the different kind of careers and subfields. So again, as you're following along with module three, be sure to complete the guided notes that go along with it. These ones are short, so don't worry about it that much. <laughs> okay, so, okay. So in psychology, we kind of divide careers into two subfields. So this is, so if you study psychology in college, you're always gonna take an intro course like this one. This is basically a psych 101. And then if you're like, you know what, I really do want to, I'm interested in, you know, the cognitive part of it or the um, biological or sociocultural one, then you might say, I want to go on to study more psychology. Then as you begin to take these courses, you're going to have to think about what kind of career in psychology might you want if that's what you do want. And there are lots of different options, but they're divided into two big categories. One is basic research and one is applied research. So if you go into basic research, you are going to be somebody who is probably not working with a lot of people. Um, you are not going to be like a therapist or a counselor, but you are you're what we kind of see more as like the brainy, like scientist side of psychology. You'll be typically working in a lab or in an office where you're doing studies and research based on um, the different concepts that you're that you're interested in. So for example, if you were like a, let's say you were a cognitive psych, you study cognitive psychology and you went into basic research, you might, you might be doing um, experiments or studies, probably studies more likely, where you may be talking to people and having them um, do certain tasks to see how they memorize things. So you're going to be somebody, again, who's working more doing research. We're going to be adding to the base of knowledge that we have about psychology. On the other hand, you have applied research. And this is, as it implies in the title, you're applying it to something. And typically, it's so people can work on something. So a lot of times, applied psychologists, um, applied research psychologists, are people who are out in the field more. There's somebody who might be a therapist, a forensic psychologist, a sports psychologist, things like that. They're going to be directly working with patients typically and giving them solutions to try to reach their fullest potential, right? So to divide these a little bit further down, so we have basic research careers. This could include things like cognitive psychologists, like I just mentioned, developmental psychologists. So a developmental one would study um, like how humans develop over time. So they might focus in on babies and what they do. You might study teenagers and adolescents and what's going on then. Um, you might study like gender, like how does a gender identity play into these things, things like that. Educational psychologists, so thinking about learning, experimental psychologists, so they're actually doing experiments, quantitative, working with numbers, and social psychologists, so thinking about um, society as a whole. On the other hand, we have applied research, um, and these careers could include things, um, industrial organizational psychologists. These are typically people who work kind of with businesses or offices, and they think about how you can optimize like worker productivity. So like, okay, if you do these kinds of things, like this is what drives people. So if you do that, then maybe your workers will do better. Um, neuropsychologists, so kind of getting you to think about the way your brain functions and how this can impact your behavior. Rehab psychologists, um, this literally can be working with people who are in rehab for either like any kind of addiction. It also could be um, working with people who've gone through serious trauma or people like wh whether it's physical or mental and helping them get back to a better place. Um, school psychologist, so like a Miss Plasco, um, she's somebody who studied psychology and got a degree like this. Um, sports psychologist, a lot of times sports, um, especially if you're a professional athlete, it's super, you have a ton of pressure on you. So they um, employ psychologists to help them kind of deal with the, the pressure surrounding that. Um, clinical psychologists, so these are people who are kind of, um, they work in a clinic and there's somebody you can go, go to and um, it's like a therapist, essentially. 
and you have community psychologists and then counseling psychologists who all kind of fall, fall under the similar to the clinical ones, but they focus in on either counseling you through your problems and finding solutions or um, working together with an entire community to kind of work on solutions there for larger groups. So that is it for module three. Again, just a quick introduction to some of the professions. You'll obviously learn more about these as we go on, especially as we get into some of the later units at the end of the year where we talk about like addiction or um, social um, or psychological disorders, things like that. So but this is just a quick intro and it is your last mini lecture of the day. So after this, you're gonna move on to the final assignment. Mm -hmm.